We're gonna take this BMW from, yeah, grayish dirty to white and bright. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. If you're thinking I don't have a white car, all these principles apply to whatever paint color you're talking about, but they particularly will be striking when we're done on white paint. Exactly. These nice wheels here, we're gonna treat them. Let's just say they have a bit of brake dust on them. Maybe uh, throw some iron remover on first, Nick. Okay, and the only thing I would say on totally dry wheels is just make sure they're not really hot, right? Right. So if they're really hot, sometimes I might spray them down with cool water. Exactly, yeah. Um, but these are cool to the touch, so we'll do iron remover. You want the nice fan, actually. And you could have sprayed a little bit less than that, I think, but. So when we're leveling the iron remover in the all clean, some folks at home might say, well, are you messing up the chemistry of the iron remover? No, not really. Can you combine all clean and the uh, iron remover in the same vessel? Probably not. Not the best way because it over dilutes the iron remover. But by spraying the iron remover on first, you don't see it on these wheels. But as soon as we put the uh, all clean on them, you'll see that they're getting a little purple showing through. Next, we're gonna let those sit for a few minutes. Nick has already prepared the foam cannon. And a lot of people look at all this grime on this vehicle. You can actually see the grime from there. It's not clean, it's not white, it's not pristine. And they think, oh, I need a high alkaline or a high pH pre-wash. With the great surfactants that we have in Incredible Suds, that is really not necessary. Incredible Suds by itself is going to break through, is gonna eat all that grime up and when we rinse it away for our pre-rinse, it's gonna do a great job. The browning on the tires, already very impressive. Yeah. Make sure that you um, shake up incredible suds in your foam can. And it's, it's, it's happened to me a couple times where I'm like, why am I not getting the suds that I want? It's because the incredible suds was sitting at the bottom, wasn't properly mixed. So get that mixed up, and then we're gonna go ahead and just stack it on top. All right, Ivan, it has been layered in double foam. Right, so from there we're gonna clean the wheels while the incredible suds is doing its thing on the paint. Is there such thing as too much foam? Sometimes there is, but in this case, it's looking pretty good. Start wherever you want. My suggestion upon many lessons from Mr. LaCroix, with the wheel cleaning is wherever you start, just go in a circle, go clockwise. So I started at 12 o'clock, I'm gonna remember that. Work my way around the wheel. Now we don't have to remember where I started or where I've been. Well, I guess where I started, but you get the idea. Be methodical. Or be whatever you wanna be. It's your car. If you've got the products in hand, just enjoy. But you will save time and do it right if you're methodical and you won't miss a spot. Once you have that method and, and madness taken care of, you know where you're going, you know what you want to do, and you know how you're going to get there. Now, just like good cooking shows on TV, we've already done the wheels on the other side. So we don't have to bore you with that. You know, when they put it in the oven and say, put it in the oven at 350 for two hours, and then they turn around and they're pulling out of the oven, it was already cooked when they put it in. Is that how that works? Yes, sir. What? It's already cleaned off a lot of that grime on the front and a few of the bug guts, too. So before the contact wash, Nick, have fun with the foam again. This is, I think, one of the most underrated ways of detailing a car, which is to use the foam cannon to rinse and then do one more layer of foam. It's pretty easy. What we do, we don't worry about refilling the foam cannon. We're just trying to get another layer of incredible suds on there to give us a little lubrication, a little more cleaning power, pre-contact wash, because that contact wash, Ivan, is when you can introduce scratch risk. I just triple layered that front end to give it a little bit more cleaning power for those bug guts before we hit it. Exactly. Then from there, Nick, you might want to froth this up a little. Should we froth it? It's froth time. Yeah. 
There we go. I think we have incredible suds. It's sudsy, soapy, ready to clean. Where do you want me to start? Start here, go front, forward. I'll start here and go backwards. Perfect. Most of you at home are going to be working solo, I imagine. Yeah. So it's good to communicate if you ever work with someone else. And it is a great family project. Or a good couples project as well. well that was part of our goal with DIY Detail was just Make this something that's fun, people can do in their driveway. Maybe reminding you guys of how easy this can be with the right chemicals and a little bit of knowledge, technique. Um, just feel empowered to take care of your prized possession, right? Like yeah. you got a BMW like this, it ain't cheap. No. Now since these lowers were really bad, I'm just going over it second time with the suds just to make sure we've got all the traffic film off of there because oh, we'll be contaminate we'll be decontaminating the vehicle. Yeah, I'm going over twice as well. I, uh, it's pretty gnarly down here. Yeah, this vehicle, uh, let's just say, wasn't maintained dramatically well. They could have done a better job. But people sometimes, life gets in the way and the car is the least important thing of their worries. Nobody minds a clean car, even if they say they're not really that into it. Even people who, as a pro, I would do their interior, they never minded when I made the outside look great too. Exactly. Oh my gosh, I was leaving the grocery store and I came back to my car and it looked so good. What do you mean you cleaned my car? I didn't want it clean, I wanted it dirty. Don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. No. No. Another part of this adventure that's really fun is when you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave us a comment below. We love that. And don't forget the thumbs up. Next up, there was a lot, and I say a lot, of iron contamination on this vehicle. We did a little test spot on the other side. And we're gonna use our synthetic decontamination towel with all the little beautiful perforations in it. One spray of the DIY Detail Iron Remover on the panel, one on the towel, and with no pressure, we're gonna decontaminate. And yes, I'm starting on the window, because windows deserve decontamination as well. So just like we did the wash, Nick, go forward, I'll go backwards, and we'll meet on the other side. Sounds great. One spray on the towel, one on the paint. Now one question we get a lot is, can I do this with other brands? Well, the answer is, we don't know. Yes, some brands you can, some you definitely can't. So there's two ways around that. You have to do a test spot and maybe risk damaging your decontamination towel or just use ours. It's proven, it's sure, we know it, and thousands of other detailers have tried it as well. So Ivan, mean, this works 99% of the time, but when you're on a super, super, super decontaminated vehicle, people might say, well, should I just whip out the clay bar? Because yeah. for me, I feel like I'm at a point where I either need more iron remover or I need more pressure, right? I'm putting myself in the, in the eyes of a DIYer at home who does three no pressure passes and still sees orange particles on the paint. Right. Pressure is never the answer. And if you're using a traditional clay bar, you have to polish afterwards. Whereas this, you might have to do a few more little passes here and there, but there's no polishing involved. So I put no pressure, Ivan? Yeah. I'm just gonna tell you what just worked for me in the real world. Two sprays of iron remover just on the paint. Yep. Can't tell you why I did it versus on the towel. And I did about 12 passes with no pressure and the orange dot disappeared. Yeah, exactly. So I'm telling you, it's totally possible. I used two extra sprays past what the most efficient, cost-effective method in the industry would ever teach you through Ivan. And I got exactly what I was looking for. I did not take out a clay bar, which gets way more aggressive and will likely mar your paint. So, um, yeah, it's just, you can see the contamination here and feel it, but it is coming off. And after those two sprays, I have so much iron remover left in terms of suds that I don't need any more. It's all going away. 
Because I don't want you guys to feel betrayed out there if this ever happens and you're like, well, he told me just a couple of passes and now it's not working. Well, no, just no pressure. Just give it like 10 passes. And Ivan, I'm right behind the front wheel, aren't I? Yeah, that's I mean, the this worst is, spot on the vehicle. Exactly. So don't think that I'm over dramatic here. It's just this paint really needed decon. Now, the other way that you could do it is apply the iron remover, do a few passes, and then let it sit for five minutes. Go do another panel and come back. Let the chemical do the job for you. Patience is a big part of detailing. Okay, so I've done a panel, right? I've got four sides of this amazing towel. Now I have a fresh side. One spray on the towel, another spray on the panel, and I'm back at it. Now this back end, like Nick had on that fender, is just covered in red dots. I've removed that metallic piece that's in front of that rust stain, and now I'm gonna let the chemical work at the rust stain, and I'll come back in a minute. So here you can see I've gone over it with the decontamination towel, and even though I've removed those iron particles, the stains are just bleeding down around here. And a white car that hasn't been decontaminated in a long time is definitely gonna have that. So I'm gonna let it sit, I'm gonna finish the side, and then come back to the rear one more time. If you wash your vehicle frequently and decontaminate it on a regular basis, you won't have this extreme contamination like we have on this vehicle. And it's not as if it's gritty in any way, shape, or form. It's just that iron contamination is definitely in the paint. So I just chose to re-dunk my towel. Just kind of flush it a little bit and get it ready for the rest of this hood. Rule is usually one side of the towel per panel, but let the, let the feel of the paint kind of dictate. Like, if it's nasty and you're flipping that towel more often, it doesn't hurt to re-dunk your, uh, your towel, Ivan. No, not at all. And once again, be patient. If you remember, I let the back of the vehicle sit and you can see all the iron contam contamination that's come off of there. So let's add a little more, and then finish it off with the towel. And now it's coming off effortlessly, and sometimes the stain just won't come out. So if you have let it sit for a few minutes, let the iron remover do its thing, gone over it with the decontamination towel three or four times, and you still have that stain, it may need to be polished off at that point. With the iron remover, rinsing is a very important step. You want to make sure you've rinsed it all the way. Not because it's dangerous for the paint, but because, see these red streaks coming out of the door handle? Well, if I didn't rinse that door handle properly, next time it rains, there'd be red streaks coming out. And then I'd have somebody out here with a camera going, his car is bleeding. So don't worry about it. Nick. I don't think I've seen such a hydrophilic vehicle in a long time. And by hydrophilic, do you mean it looks like there's nothing on this paint because it's totally flat? Yeah, there's not a bead in sight. <laughs> Amazingly, the wheels have more hydrophobics than the vehicle. We're gonna make it look so good though. Yeah. This ain't over yet. So Nick, how do we fix this? Quick beads. Quick beads. So are you shocked? Like, I'm looking at this paint. There is not one ounce of protection on here. It's de this paint is dead, Ivan. Yeah, but fortunately I know a good doctor. Exactly. Dr. Quick Beads. So we're gonna spray it on the paint, but on the wheels as well. Exactly. This is our water activated ceramic. And you don't wanna give it too much dwell time, folks. Like I would say maximum 30 seconds. Ivan, you've talked to detailers all over the country in different conditions. What's your best advice for them? 30 seconds to two minutes if you're inside. If you're outside in the direct sun, rinse it off as soon as you can. We already have full beading here. It's as if the car has a ceramic coating on it. Now Nick, somewhat over applying the quick beads. That's why I like to spray it off quick. Yeah, I over apply and spray off quick. It's my safety net. 
And now I'm not gonna rinse it off the vehicle. I'm going to activate it using the pressure washer from the bottom up. Well, my technique is to do the widest fan possible, but to hit every surface, I feel like I need to apply it that much. Right. If you, as you're spraying the trigger, if you move your hand at the same time, so a fan motion. But yeah. it only... Yeah, but you have to be quick. So it's... Yeah. Oh, like, th oh, like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, LaCroix. Now, since Nick has done this whole side, I'm gonna go at a 45 degree angle, driving the water up and back at the same time. Any strategy for the roof? Yeah, so for the roof, let's see it. Let's go see it up here. a little higher if you can. Okay. Start at the other side, and you can see where it lands because of the how dead this paint is. And once you've seen where it lands, well then. And you're not wasting too much in the air there, is it? No, because it's falling. Gravity is doing its thing, falling on the vehicle. Okay. While we're at it, do the windshield. And the back window. Because we're gonna spread the product onto the next side of the vehicle. So let's get it over there now and then. Right. That way we're not spraying from this side and then spraying from the other side. Yep, yep. So I did the roof. Let's move it over. So not only does quick beads provide super beading slickness, but it also provides durable protection. As a safety precaution, I'm just gonna quickly re-rinse the vehicle, making sure we don't have any quick beads left on the surface, and also one little final rinse out to, in case there's a bit of iron remover hiding somewhere. I was gonna say, for this final rinse, you could also go for a garden hose. Oh, definitely. You know, on that shower setting, just yeah. if you're really just trying to get everything off the paint. If you actually use a garden hose or less pressure, you actually end up drying the paint even more. Look at all those water beads. Yeah, but this is basically dry compared to that. If you're like Ivan, you buy quick beads by the bottle. If you're like me, you buy it by the gallon. Either way, it can be super fun. You can figure it out along yep. the way and maybe you will develop super efficient spraying techniques as well. Right, and you know, Mr. Ladd, so Mr. Ladd's detailing tips and tricks, Bo Million, he works in South Florida. He's dealing with sun, he's dealing with heat. He sprays it actually into the stream of his pressure washer, distributing it and applying it to the vehicle at the same time. So, and then it flushes very quickly afterwards. Exactly, it just, it's a beautiful way of doing it. Now, we get to dry this. Ivan, if you have never dried your paint after using quick beads, you're missing out. Right, it literally effortlessly dries away. It feels super slick, because it is, and protected. Now. People are saying, you've rinsed the car off and you're not using a drying aid. You're gonna scratch the paint. No, we're not. The Quick Beads is its own drying aid. So there's no need to have an additional drying aid. Now, if you want additional drying aid, boy, have we got something for you, ceramic gloss. But in this case, it's really not necessary. Is it fun? Yes. Does it do the job? Of course. And this, it's a drying aid that makes the paint slick, but it also makes the, the beads vanish. Like it, uh, it works super well at the same time. Like one pass with the drying blanket here. And it's done. And it's done. So you see this technique all the time on YouTube, right? 
over a flat panel. But what do you do on side panels, Ivan? Well, one method that works really well is you anchor the top of the towel with your right hand or your top hand, and then you can go ahead and use your left hand. I've got two layers of towel here, so it's gonna prevent any unnecessary pressure. We don't wanna add pressure because when you're drying the paint is when you risk it the most to, to mar it, right? And then you, you anchor from the top so it doesn't fall to the ground. How's that sound to you, Ivan? That sounds perfect. If your towel hits the ground, bye-bye towel. And this towel was so absorbent, I've washed, or I've dried over half the car with it, and bingo, one pass, it's perfectly dry. Quick Beads is amazing. I, don't sleep on it, folks. Ceramic gloss happens to maybe be my favorite, and I think I neglected Quick Beads for too long in my personal detailing life. Mostly because I have hard water in Utah and sometimes I'm detailing outside and I'm like, I just want to stay in a controlled drying process, right? I want to work section by section, but man. That and you use rinseless a lot. So yeah, I use rinseless a lot. Rinseless and quick beads, not the best of friends. They can work well together, you can do it, but if you're using a rinseless wash, it's because you don't want to rinse afterwards. Exactly. Oh, the paint is so slick, Ivan. Yes. Wow. And we've brought shine back to this vehicle. What an amazing product. Quick beads, I'll never take you for granted again. We spoke with someone today who's used a lot of spray and rinse products, says they restore or bring a lot of water beading to the paint, but they don't feel slick like this. Right. Yeah, he automatically or instantly became a quick beads convert. Ivan, what are you doing? You're using your drying towel on the wheels? Right. My wheels are clean. I've done a great job of cleaning them. There's nothing left on the wheel to get the towel dirty. The only thing left on the wheel is water and quick beads. Nick, any closing thoughts? It's human, hot in here, but this car looks amazing. Right. Anything else they should be looking at? Quick beads is phenomenal, possibly the goat. If you want to learn more about quick beads, we'll see it right here. 